Welcome to JavaScript tutorial number three, input and output. In this video, we'll be covering the different output and input tools we can use to interact with our user. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. The good news is we've already learned how to output information with an alert. However, an alert can be very annoying. Imagine visiting a site that constantly pops up with information. There are several other ways to output information and present it on screen. We're going to focus on one specific way, as I personally believe it is the best way to seamlessly integrate your JavaScript with your web page or web app. Here are two less common ways of outputting information. Document.write, which will write out to the screen, but it will overwrite any other HTML. So it tends to be only useful for testing purposes. We also have console.log, which will write information to the web console. You can see the web console in most browsers by pressing F12. Alright, the best way to display information is to modify a section of your HTML that you set up on purpose to hold the results of your calculations and data. We use document.getElementById in our HTML to do this. Now this might look like a long scary line of code, but let's dissect it. Firstly, we want this document, i.e. the web page, and we want to get an element inside it by an ID. Then we actually specify the ID name of a tag inside our page. And then we want to get its inner HTML. The inner HTML part is the section between the two HTML tags. We then can put our results in it by using it like a variable. Here I output the result of 5 times 5. It's that easy and will work on any element inside your web page so long as you give it an ID. Ok, let's give it a shot. Let's create a test page where we put the results of multiplying two numbers together into paragraph tags on our page. We'll call our file inner.html. Alright, so let's come over here and we'll create new text document and we're going to call it uh, inner.html. Yes, we want to change it and we open it up in our text editor. Alright, so once again we'll use our template from before, I'll copy it from our last document across and I'm going to remove everything between the script tags and I'm also going to add in a new p tag which is what we're going to store our result in and inside the p tag we want to put an id equals and let's set it to output close quotes. So now we've created this paragraph we'll close it off p and now we can store information in it. So inside of our script tags, let's do document dot get element by id. Now each each word after the get starts with a capital letter. So get capital E for element, capital B for by, and capital I for id. Then inside brackets, we want to put what the name of the ta uh, the id is of our tag. So it was called output. I close off the quotes. Now we want to get the dot inner HTML, and the HTML part is in all capitals. And that's going to equal. Let's do five times five, and we put a semicolon on the end to tell JavaScript we finished with that line. Let's save this file and let's open it up. All right. So to open up, we double click it or drag it into our web browser and we get our result and it's placed straight into the page no pop up nothing we just get our result awesome so now that we know how to output results on screen let's learn how to get data into our script to make our scripts more dynamic there are many potential ways to get data into our script but we'll focus on a couple an easy one is prompt it works just like an alert creating a pop up however there will be a space to enter information so we can enter something like our name and hit OK and it will be stored into a variable. OK, let's test out prompt. This will be a simple modification of our last script, but let's call it hello.html and practice writing our web pages. We'll take the user's name and say hello to them. Alright, so let's save this file as and we'll call it hello.html alright so we've changed it so now let's get a prompt from the user 
So we'll keep our paragraph how it was, and we're just going to modify this line here. So instead of 5 times 5, what we're going to do is we're going to do a string hello, so open quotes, hello, space, uh, we'll put a, we'll put a uh, comma in there, space, close quotes. Then we can use the plus sign to add on to the end of this hello, and we're going to put in prompt. And then inside the prompt brackets, we're going to ask the user to enter their name. So enter your name. Then we can close off the quotes. They'll put a colon on the end there. Close off the quotes and close off the brackets. And we've got our semicolon on the end. So that's our whole line of code written there. So now we'll prompt the user for their name and it will add the result of their name onto the hello. And then it'll store it inside the inner HTML of our output paragraph. All right, so we save this. And we come over and we drag our hello HTML into our web browser or double click it. And it'll pop up going enter your name. So I'll put in draps. We hit OK and we get hello draps. So we've successfully got an input from the user and printed it back out to them on screen inside the paragraph. Awesome. There is an even better way to get data from the user in a more friendly standard way. We do that with forms. Forms are great because there is already plenty of element types for our forms, such as text boxes, drop downs, check boxes, etc. We can even change how the form looks with CSS. Just like we used inner HTML to get the information between the tags, we can also access the form's value attribute, like a variable too, meaning we can grab the information out of it and spit it back out somewhere else on the page. Let's test it out and create two text boxes that add two numbers of our choice together. We'll also be using what's called a function to run code when a button is pressed. Because we haven't covered functions yet, I'll keep it as simple as possible. Let's call our file add.html. All right, so let's come back over to our script and we'll save it as a new. And we'll call it add.html. All right, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this, uh, this script section because we'll, we'll recreate it up higher. And we'll move our output down to the bottom. All right, so let's create our form. So we're gonna take a number one, which is gonna be the first number we wanna add, and that's gonna have an input tag next to it, which is gonna be of type equals text. And its ID, we're going to set it to num1. All right, we can close off our input tag. And we're gonna put, not gonna put this inside of a form because we don't wanna actually submit the form. So we're just gonna add the elements. And we'll put a plus in here because we're gonna be adding the two together. And we'll put in our number two. And that's gonna be another input type equals text ID equals num2. And we'll close that off. Now we're going to have one last form element, which is going to be a button. So button on click. So when it's clicked, so on click, it's equal to, we can actually put JavaScript inside these quotes here. So our JavaScript is going to be my function. And my function is going to be a block of code that we want to run later. All right. So we've created our button. And we can put uh, something inside of it after we close our button tag, which we'll do equals, and we'll do our closing button tag. All right, so we've created our output section, our button to make them equal, like to do the calculation, and our number one and our number two. Let's create our script now. So up the top, we'll do our script. Do script. We want to create a function. So we'll do function my function and then now that we've named our function we use curly braces to tell JavaScript what's inside this function all right so we've got an open curly brace and a closing curly brace and we're gonna have three lines of code inside this function let's create some variables so we're gonna have two variables var num1 which is gonna be our first number field so we're going to be getting text from a text field, so we need to turn it into an, an into a number. So to do that, we use pass 
int, we pass it into a, a whole number, an integer, uh, int with a capital I. And then inside the brackets, we're going to get doc, document dot get element by ID. And we're going to get the num1 uh, element. And we want to get its dot value. So the value inside of that input field. And we can close off those brackets for the parsings and put a colon on the end. Okay, now we want to get our second number. So what we'll do is we'll just copy this whole line, put it on the next one, call it num2, and we're going to get the ID num2. Okay, now we're going to create our third line, which is going to be our output. So document dot get element by ID and we want to get the output tag which is our paragraph and we want to get its inner HTML we're going to make that equal num1 plus num2 and we're going to put a semicolon on the end cool so that finishes our function our block of code now we can save this and give it a shot so we save it and we drag it into our web browser or double click it we open up and we get this form so we get number one so we could put in something like five and number two we could put something in there like 20 and then an equal sign so we could hit equals and we get the output down here in our paragraph so we got number one five number two 20 equals number 25 we can change this to some ludicrously large number, hit equals, and it will do the calculation happily, happily for us. Cool. This concludes our look at input and output in JavaScript. Next, we'll be looking at how we can use the control flow statements if and switch to make decisions inside our JavaScript code. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.